वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट एंड जय स्वामी नारायण इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी वर डिस्कस अबाउट द सेंटर ऑफ मास एंड हाउ वी कैन कैलकुलेट द सेंटर ऑफ मास इन द वन डायमेंशनल एज वेल एज इन द थ्री डायमेंशन नाउ डियर स्टूडेंट व्हेन द टू और मोर ऑब्जेक्ट्स और वी कैन से दैट द व्हेन द सिस्टम ऑफ द पार्टिकल अंडरगोस विद द डिफरेंट फोर्सेस when the two or more object are act upon a different forces all the objects or all the particles of the system of the particle moves for with the different different velocity and for that how fast the center of mass moves with the external force under the influence of the different force right so when the objects are moves under the under the influence of the different forces right the center of mass of the system of particle also moves right and we need to understand how fast what is the velocity of the center of mass what is the momentum of the center of mass so that all the things we will discuss in this video right so in the motion of the center of mass so when the particles in the system of particle when the two or more objects are moves with the different forces right with the different velocity what is the velocity of the center of mass because when the objects moves with the some velocity the center of mass also moves with the some velocity right so we need to study we need to calculate the velocity of the center of mass the momentum of the center of mass so how we can calculate the velocity momentum acceleration of the center of mass under the influence of the different forces right so we will discuss in this video so dear student let us talk about the motion of the center of mass dear student you know that what do you mean by the center of mass center of mass is a point in which whole the mass of the system of particle is concentrated and how we can calculate the center of mass so consider a system of n particles having the mass m1 m2 m3 up to mn has a position vector r1 r2 r3 up to rn in this system of n particles the center of mass is a point at which whole the mass of the system is concentrated right so the center of mass is a point at which the whole the mass of the system of particle is concentrated now how we can calculate the center of mass the position vector of the center of mass is rcm the center of mass of the system of n particles is calculated by a formula that we already discussed in the previous video rcm cm stands for the center of mass and r is for the position vector so rcm is the position vector of the center of mass is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 up to mn rn divided by m1 plus m2 up to mn right here the m1 m2 m3 up to mn is the mass of the particles and r1 r2 r3 up to rn is the position vector of the particles right now we know that m1 plus m2 plus up to mn that is the total mass of the system of particle we taking we take as a capital m so here the capital m is equal to m1 m2 up to mn the total mass of the system of particle and this capital m we take on the other side we get the equation right m into rcm is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus mn rn right the number of particles are there n particles are there so we write the equation in terms of the n particles right so m into rcm is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus up to mn rn right so where capital m is the total mass of the system of the particle m1 m2 m3 up to mn is the mass of the different particles and r1 r2 r3 up to rn is the position vector of the different particles now from this 
how we can calculate the velocity from the position dear student you know that differentiating a position with respect to time the rate of change of position with respect to time gives the velocity right so here differentiating this equation here rcm is the position of the center of mass r1 is the position of the first particle r2 is the position of the second particle r n is the position of the n particle right so differentiating this equation with respect to time we get the velocity of the center of mass so differentiating a position of the center of mass with respect to time we get the velocity of the center of mass so differentiating this equation with respect to time differentiating with respect to time so we need to add a d by dt in all the terms right so add the d by dt of r m into r c m d by dt of m1 r1 plus d by dt of m2 r2 plus d by dt of mn into r n right so here dear student m1 m2 m3 up to mn mass of the particles remains constant with the time similarly m1 m2 m3 up to mn mass of the particle remains constant with the time so we can say that the capital m that is the total mass of the system of particles is constant remains constant with the time right so this constant mass is a constant with the time so we take the mass outside the differentiation right so m we take outside the differentiation so we get the equation m into dr cm by dt is equal to m1 into dr1 by dt plus m2 into dr2 by dt plus mn into drn by dt right so here the dr cm by dt that means the rate of change of position of center of mass with respect to time that is called the velocity of the center of mass right dr1 by dt dr2 by dt and drn by dt so we, we know that dr by dt that is a velocity so here m into drm by dt that is the drcm by dt that is the vcm so capital m into vcm is equal to m1 dr1 by dt is a v1 plus dr2 by dt v2 that is the m2 into v2 up to mn into vn we get the equation number 2 where vcm is the velocity of the center of mass right so from this equation we get the equation of the velocity of the center of mass vcm is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 up to mn vn divided by m1 plus m2 up to mn right so understand this one how we can get the velocity of the center of mass so to calculate the velocity of the center of mass we require the mass of the particles and the velocity of each particle so again from the equation number 2 m into vcm is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 up to mn into vn so here the product of mass and the velocity what is the product of the mass and velocity the product of mass and velocity is called the momentum so we take the m1 v1 is equal to p1 that is the momentum of the first particle m2 v2 is equal to p2 that is the momentum of the second particle m3 v3 is the p3 that is the momentum of the third particle similarly mn vn is equal to pn momentum of each particle so product of mass and the velocity is called the momentum so we take from this equation number 2 m1 v1 we take a p1 m2 v2 we take a p2 and mn vn we take a pn right but m into vcm we cannot take a pcm because here the vcm is the velocity of the center of mass and m is the total mass of the system of particle so we take as it is m into vcm is equal to p1 plus p2 up to pn right so p1 is the momentum of the first particle p2 is the momentum of the second particle pn is the momentum of n particle right 
So from this, we can get the equation M into VCM. M is the total mass of the system of M particle. VCM is the velocity of the center of mass is equal to capital P, where capital P is equal to P1, P2, P1 plus P2 plus up to Pn. That is the total linear momentum of the system of the particle, right? So we derive the equation M into VCM is equal to P. So total mass into the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the total linear momentum of system of N particles, right? So from this equation, we can say that the total linear momentum of the system of N particle is equal to the product of the total mass and the velocity of the center of mass. Understand? So now again from the equation number 2. What is the equation 2? M into VCM is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2 plus up to Mn Vn. Now differentiating the velocity with respect to time, we get the acceleration. So differentiating this equation with respect to time. So M and the M1, M2, M3 up to Mn, mass of the particle remains constant with the time. So we take the outside the differentiation. So differentiating this equation with respect to time, we get M into dVCM by dd is equal to M1 d1 by dt, M2 dv2 by dt up to Mn dvn by dt. Here the dv by dt, that is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, it is equal to the acceleration. So dvcm by dt. So instead of this dvcm by dt, we take the acm, where acm is the acceleration of the center of mass, right? Is equal to m1 into a1 plus m2 into a2 up to mn into an, right? So capital M is the total mass of the system of n particles and acm is the acceleration of the center of mass m1 a1 plus m2 a2 up to mn an, right? Where acm is the acceleration of the center of mass, right? So from this equation, we can calculate the acceleration of the center of mass acm is equal to m1 into a1 plus m2 a2 up to mn an divided by m1 plus m2 up to mn, right? But we know that product of mass into acceleration. According to the Newton's second law, the product of mass into acceleration, it is equal to the external force. So m into a, we take a f1, right? So from the equation number 5, we get capital M into ACM is equal to F1 plus F2 up to Fn, where F1, F2 up to Fn are the external force acting on the particles, right? So the resultant external force, here the sum of all the external force acting on the body, F1 plus F2 up to Fn, we take the F external. So we get a M into ACM is equal to F external, where F external is equal to F1 plus F2 up to Fn, resultant force acting on a system of N particle. So from that, we can say that the resultant force acting on the system of N particle is equal to the product of total mass of the system and the acceleration of the center of mass. So this statement is called the Newton's second law of the system of N particle. Newton's second law for the system of N particles. But here, we cannot consider the internal forces, right? Because the internal forces acting on the system of N particle are cancelled out by each other, right? According to the Newton's third law, the force acting on the first particle applied the force acting on a particle 1 by a particle 2 is same as the force acting on a particle 2 by a particle 1, right? So according to the Newton's third law, right, the internal forces acting on the system of N particles cancel out. So we cannot take an, take an in the F internal forces acting on the system of N particles. So here M in, in a M into ACM is equal to F external 
we take the external forces acting on the system of n particle right now further from the equation number 4 what is the equation number 4 m into v cm is equal to p we were derived this equation in the same video previously m is the total mass of the system of n particle v cm is the velocity of the center of mass is equal to capital p that is the total linear momentum of the system of n particle right so differentiating this equation with respect to time m is the mass remains constant with the time we take out of the integration uh, out of the differentiation so m into dvcm by dt is equal to dp by dt so here the dvcm by dt that is the acm m into acm is equal to dp by dt so the rate of change of total linear momentum is equal to the product of mass into the acceleration of the center of mass right so from this equation m into acm is equal to f external right and m into acm is equal to dp by dt so if we combine these two equation we get m into acm is equal to dp by dt is equal to f external where capital m is the total mass of the system of n particle acm is the acceleration of the center of mass and capital p is the dp by dt capital p is the total linear momentum of the system of n particle and dp by dt is equal to rate of change of total linear momentum right so this equation is a newton second law for the system of n particle so what is the newton second law for the system of n particles right the resultant external force acting on the system of n particles is equal to the rate of change of total linear momentum of the system of n particles right or we can say that the resultant external force acting on the system of n particle is equal to the product of total mass and the acceleration of the center of mass right so to prove the newton second law for the system of n particle we need to have the newton third law right and for that so dear student understand how we can derive the newton second law for the system of n particles right and what is the newton second law of the for the system of n particles m into acm is equal to dp by dd is equal to f external right now we'll discuss how we can calculate the center of mass of the rigid body so what is the rigid body you know that when the relative distances between the particles remains constant with the time the relative distances between the particles are invariant invariant then we the remains constant with the time the system of particle is said to be a rigid body right and the center of mass of the rigid body depends on the mass distribution in the rigid body and the shape of the rigid body so this point is a very important each and every line of the point is a important for the one marks question for the mcq right so you have to take care about that so center of mass of the rigid body what do you mean by the rigid body understand when the relative distances between the particles remains constant with the time the when the relative distances are invariant the system of particles are said to be a rigid body right and the center of mass of the rigid body depends on the mass distribution and the shape of the rigid body now the center of mass of the rigid body may be either inside the matter of the body or outside the matter of the body the center of mass of the rigid body may be inside the matter or outside the matter right or we can say that we can think about the when the where the center of mass of the rigid body is located is the matter is there or matter is not there so the center of the mass of the rigid body may be inside the matter or outside the matter for example for a symmetrical rigid body or a finite shape the center of mass located at its a geometrical center most of the rigid body with the finite shape right 
we can see that we can consider the sphere we can consider the cube we can consider the cylinder so most of the rigid body of the symmetrical shape or we can say that the most of the rigid body with the finite state shape right the center of mass is located at the geometrical center for example if we consider the solid sphere right if we consider the solid sphere the center of mass in a solid sphere so here dear student the center of mass of the solid sphere if we consider the solid sphere the center of mass is at the geometrical center and the point at which the center of mass is located is inside the matter so dear student the location of the center of mass in the solid sphere is at the geometrical center and inside the matter similarly if we considering a ring right the center of mass of a ring is at the geometrical center but it is the center of mass in a case of this ring is outside the matter because the the point the the point at which the center of mass the location of the center of mass is outside the matter similarly if you considering the hollow sphere the center of mass is at a geometrical center but it is outside the matter right similarly the center of mass of the thin rod is at the geometrical center and inside the matter so if we consider the cube right the center of mass of the cube is also a inside the matter and the, at the geometrically center so this way you can find the center of mass of the symmetrical rigid body of a, or we can say that the rigid body with the finite shape right so same question is given in your exercise 7.1 give the location of the center of mass in the exercise first question is given that 7.1 give the location of the center of mass of a sphere cylinder ring and cube each of a uniform mass density does the center of mass of a body necessarily lies inside the body right so here all the four shape is a symmetrically shape right symmetrically body so the center of mass of sphere cylindrical ring and cube is at its geometrically center right and if the if we considering the sphere the center of mass of the sphere is at its geometrically center but inside the matter the center of mass of the cylinder is also a geometrically center inside the matter but if we considering the ring right the center of mass of the ring is at the geometrically center but it is outside the matter so it is not necessary that, that the center of mass of a body is inside the body it may be a outside the matter it may be a outside the body right understand dear student this question number 1 of the exercise location of the center of mass of the sphere cylinder ring and cube is at the geometrical center right and in the sphere cylinder and cube the center of mass is inside the body and ring the center of mass is at the outside the body right so now dear student we will see how the center of mass of the rigid body of the symmetrical shape or asymmetrical shape can be calculated there are two method to calculate the center of mass first method is the graphical method for the calculation of the center of mass and second method is the analytical method for the calculation of the center of mass so first we will see a graphical method for the calculation of the center of mass the center of mass of the rigid body of the symmetrical shape right can be easily calculated by a graphical method so for that we consider a triangular plate of a uniform mass density or we can say that this type of the triangular lamina plate for of the uniform mass distribution and how we can calculate the center of mass graphically so take a, any one side of this triangle and convert this triangle into the thin shape 
and locate the center of mass of the thin sphere we get the one altitude of the triangle similarly find all the altitude of the triangle right so first of all we take a uh, side bc and estimate this triangle is made up of the small thin sheet of which is parallel to the bc right so divide this triangle into the small sheet which is parallel to the bc and locate the center of mass of all the thin sheet we get the imaginary line or we can say that the altitude of the side bc similarly take the another side right draw the altitude of the another side similarly take the third side draw the altitude of the third side and the we get the center so this one is the geometrical center of the triangular plane and it is the center of mass of the triangular plane so graphically this way we can calculate the we can locate the center of mass of the any symmetrically shape right so if we considering a square square has a four side so take the any one side and convert this square into the small thin sheet right and locate the center of mass of all the thin sheet we get the imaginary line take the another side and convert the square into the small thin sheet locate the center of the small thin sheet and draw the another imaginary line and the center of this both the imaginary line intersecting point of the both the imaginary line is the center of mass of the square right so understand how the graphical method for the calculation of the center of mass second method for calculation of the center of mass is the analytical method so analytical method for the calculation of the center of mass so for that consider a rigid body as shown in the figure any type of the shape not a symmetrical shape symmetrical shape we can calculate the center of mass with the analytical method for the symmetrical shape as well as the asymmetrical shape so here consider a rigid body as shown in this figure which is a asymmetrical shape and uniform mass density so how we can calculate the center of mass of this asymmetrical body with the analytical method right so divide this asymmetrical body into the small volume segment and the volume of this small segment is a dv so let us consider that this rigid body is made up of a small volume segment dv calculate the mass of this small volume segment the mass of the small volume segment dv is a dm which is called the mass element so let us consider that the rigid body is made up of the infinite number of this mass element so what is the mass element the mass of the small volume segment right infinitesimally small volume segment is called the mass element so consider the rigid body is made up of the such a type of the small volume segment and the mass of the small volume segment is called the mass element so the rigid body is made up of the infinite number of this mass element dm1 dm2 dm3 dm n right and the position vector of all the elements is a r1 r2 to rn so to calculate the center of mass we require the mass of the element and the position vector of the element right similarly in the previous case how we can calculate the center of mass to calculate the center of mass we require a mass of the particle and the position vector similarly here the rigid body is consider as a infinite number of the mass element and the position vector of all the elements are r1 r2 r3 up to rn so the center of mass this of this rigid body is a rcm is equal to dm1 that is the mass of the first mass element into position vector r1 plus dm2 into r2 up to dmn into rn divided by dm1 plus dm2 up to dm but dm1 for mass of the first mass element dm2 mass of the second mass element dm total mass of the rigid body so here we get the total mass of the rigid body right so rcm is equal to dm1 into r1 plus dm2 into r2 up to dmn into rn divided by dm1 plus dm2 
is up to dmn. So in the form of the sigma, we can write like this. RCM is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to n. R dmi into ri divided by sigma i equal to 1 to n dmi, right? Here sigma dmi is the total mass of the rigid body. So here the segment is continuous over the rigid body, right? So this submission can be represented in the form of the integration, right? So segment is continuous over the rigid body. So the submission we can represent in the form of the integration. So RCM is equal to integration of RI into DN divided by integration of the DM. Here the integration of DM that is the submission of all the mass element, right? That is the total mass of the rigid body. And the total mass of the rigid body we taking out capital M. So RCM is equal to 1 by capital M into integration of the R DM, right? So here capital M is the total mass of the rigid body. RCM is the position vector of the center of mass. R is the position vector of the small set mass element, right? So if we consider the RCM is equal to XCM, YCM and ZCM, three segment, right? Three element of the position vector. The element in the direction of the X, XCM, the element in the direction of the Y, YCM, the element in the direction of the Z, ZCM, R position vector X, Y, Z, X coordinate, Y coordinate and Z coordinate. So if you want to find the X coordinate of the center of mass, XCM, we integrate the X coordinate of the position vector. So XCM is equal to 1 by M integration of X DM. YCM is equal to 1 by M integration of the Y DM and ZCM we get the 1 by M integration of the Z DM. So this way we can calculate the center of mass. All the three coordinates of the center of mass XCM, YCM and ZCM. Understand how we can calculate the analytical method. So to calculate the center of mass with the analytical method, first of all, consider a small volume segment, calculate the mass of the small volume segment and integrate over the rigid body, we get the center of mass. So let us take the one example to calculate the center of mass, right, with the help of the integration, right. So first of all, calculate the center of mass of the thin road. So here, the center of mass of the thin road. How we can calculate the center of mass of the thin road? We will discuss in the next video because the length of the video is quite large. So we will discuss the how we can calculate the center of mass of the thin road, right? With the help of the analytical method, we will discuss in the next video.